So let's see the customization options that Toon Boom gives you. And one of the customization options you might want to use is color in layers. So over here you can see that right now I got a gray color uh, layer right here. And if I were to add another uh, layer right over here, for example, I'm going to add in another drawing layer, it's still gray color. So sometimes to differentiate, you might want to change their color outlook. To do that, you can go over here and then click on this checkbox right over here. So right over here, just double click on it and you'll get a new color panel. So you can choose any color that you want right over here, press OK, and the layer color changes to indicate that particular layer. So when you do this, what happens is that uh, you can know that which layer you're working on and not be confused about it. You can do the same over here as well, double click on this, choose a layer color right here, press OK, and the layer color has changed. When you change the layer color, what happens is, is that it changes the color in the X seat as well. So as I open up X seat, now you exactly know which layer belongs to which. So there's a less uh, chance of confusion if you set layer colors just like this. So now besides this, like what happens uh, is that you have different uh, customization options and to see the different customization options you have to go to edit and over here you'll be able to see preferences right over here and in preferences there may be a lot of effects so you have to uh, look at it uh, one by one to understand what all of them are but let's go on to the most important ones so the first one over here is the auto save and the auto save is right now set for 10 minutes if Let's say, for example, you want to save it more often um, and uh, which actually will help you to reduce the chances of the uh, loss of the files. You can keep it in something like one minute or maybe in the intervals of two minutes as well. There's the camera settings right over here. So you can see that there's different camera settings right here where you can adjust different settings for that one as well. There's the node viewer settings right here. So whenever we go for a node view, you want to work around with that. You can set it out right here. These are the exposure seat settings, as you can see. So it says like you can enable and disable the drawing column, the sound column, the 3D path column and so forth. So depending on what you need and what you need to change, you can come over here. There's the drawing right here. So there's light table opacity. So whenever we click on the uh, um, the light bulb icon right here is 0 0.5 opacity, but once you click on it, then you can actually have 0 0.6, then there's 0 0.6 level of opacity once you change that out right over there. So similarly, there's zoom level settings right here, and canvas settings right here, camera canvas with height and pixel density right over there. There's timeline setting right here. So in the timeline, you can choose whether to show the groups, whether to show the effects, whether to show the sound, sound waveform, and so forth. So if you don't want to see the sound waveform, then you can just uncheck that out, then that will be removed. So continuing on, there's template settings over here. There's sound settings right over here, so you can work around with the analog. Uh, jog speed right there, open GL settings right here. So uh, uh, so OpenGL is the render, is the default uh, output engine that it uses before it renders out anything. So you have its setting right here. You can set its texture size, texture memory, all of these technical details can be adjusted out. Uh, also in the render view, you can see that you have an option whether to enable blur or enable the line texture or enable the focus. So if you turn all of these off, then even if you have applied blur, they may not appear in the final render. They will not appear in the final render. So uh, what you have to do is uh, usually you don't turn this off, but unless uh, for some reason you want to turn them off. And that's the advanced settings right over here. For example, there's advanced display mode that you can enable. There's advanced element mode that you can enable. So depending on what you need, you can come over here and change that out. And there's deformations over here as well, uh, where you can uh, set the pair, scaling pixel sizes and also work around with the particle, uh, par particle options right here. So whenever you bring in particle effects, uh, it's not more than 360 of horizontal resolution. You can also uh, enable always show particle as dots, so it uh, renders out a simple form of particles before you do the final render. So these are the settings you have. 
And this is the preference set of basic. You can actually go over here and you can have preference set for compositing. So it has its own set of settings right there. So these are just presets right over here. You can have uh, presets for cutout animation and so forth. You can also do this. You can also save out your own preferences right over here in XML format, save it out, and then you can load that out as well. So you can load it out later on and the same preferences will be loaded out. So if you are planning to switch computer or you want to uh, save the preferences for future use, you can do that as well. So these are the uh, preferences settings that you can actually work with. Besides that, what you can also do is you can work around with keyboard shortcuts. So right now the keyboard shortcut is set to Toon Boom Harmony. What you can do is you can also set it to Adobe Flash if you uh, actually come from Adobe Flash or you can set it to Toon Boom Studio if you use Studio before uh, you jumped in into Harmony. But usually I like to keep it in Harmony itself because whenever I go to someone else's computer, start working with Harmony, then I already don't know the uh, shortcut keys and everything else. And it's something to get used to over time. So to see the shortcut, you can actually expand this out and you can see the shortcut for each and every one of these settings like camera and so forth. And even if you want to change the shortcuts, you can actually click over here and then you can click over here and change the shortcut key right over here. So I, I just pressed M key on my keyboard. So Alt M or maybe let's say, for example, I can clear it out. I can hold Q, something like that. and. If it repeats the, shop, the keys, then it'll actually warn me right over here. I can add in something like this and so forth. So M is the, the safe bet as you can see. So I can go over here and press M and there you go. That's the shortcut key as you can see right over there. So just like that, I can change the shortcut key over here as well, but I'm just going to get it back to default right over there. Usually I don't like to change it, but if you want to find out what the shortcut key is, or if you want to change the shortcut key, then you can come over here and change it out just like that. You can also set uh, for settings right over here. Let's say for example, something like uh, transform um, and then, okay, so I just pressed enter by mistake. So I just want to set for something like transform. And then once I select that, you can see that it, it is highlighting transform right over there. I can go over here, go over here, and I can see the transform tools, the shortcut keys as well. I can also set something by the shortcut itself as well. So I can uh, say something like T and it'll show up the uh, ones associated with the shortcut T right over there. So T, let's go over here. Okay, so I searched for something like control T and it popped up over there. So once you search that, you can see that it actually pops up over there. And these are the uh, personalization settings which you can actually access right over here inside of Toon Boom Harmony. I uh, hope you guys learned something as always. And as always, please like, comment, share and subscribe.